like you feel you are part of part of um, something. something. Perfect. Gambia. I'm uh, from North Bank Division. I'm from Kololi. They are grabbing our land. We don't want people to come and take the land in Kololi. Do you know what is happening in Kololi? Yes. There is sense of belongingness. These people feel their community is being attacked and they're taking their land. The way people play football, soccer, they belong. Why is it not people from Basse who are coming to fight that? But it's people from Kololi. You know, because they feel they belong. They love their community. They love their society. So this philosopher is saying this is where you are. This is very relevant to what you are doing in journalism. If you really don't understand where you are going, your philosophy in life, what you really want to achieve, even if you are the best writer, it's a waste of your time. Your hope is to succeed, to be good at something. That personally, that's what drove me. I'm an employer of hundreds of people, or dozens of people in America, and serving hundreds of clients a year, and paying salaries. This is a refugee who came there 10 years earlier with nothing, knowing nobody. Because I believe, and I do. I believe and stand for something, and I do it, OK? You just stand for something, you believe it and you do it. So, but this one does not really take you to other places because it's highly socialized, but it's good, it's a good starting point. At least you belong somewhere. You feel that you love and people love you and you belong somewhere. At least you are identified with something. You are a Gambian, you love Gambia. At least this will help you in journalism because then you will not write better stories about Ghana than Gambia. Or if you have an idea why Gambians are promoting musicians from Senegal and Nigeria and not theirs, then you can make a better opinion. Write an editorial. You stand for something to promote the Jalibas, the, the Tata Dinnings and our own people, okay? Our own identity. That's where you are. And then somebody saying self-esteem. This is really one of the self-esteem. Do you know, can somebody explain what that means, self-esteem? Yeah. For yeah. Uh, like, um, believing, believing in uh, oneself. Exactly. You believe in yourself, and then you have something you stand for, what you believe in, and then you do it. <coughs> you believe in yourself. I believe I'm a Gambian, and I believe Gambia, and this is not really a. Uh, um, I'm not flattering here. Personally, as a Gambian, I believe Gambia is the best country in the entire world. That's my belief. Okay, I believe there's nothing like tribalism or Mandinka wall of Pular or anything. I speak four languages in Gambia. I, I grew up among serial people. You see me, I'm that. You think I'm serial. So, the, I, the, I believe Gambia is the best and I see Gambia. Okay, that's my sense of self-esteem. When I write journalism, I care about people who are arrested and detained and who should have their freedom. That's what I care about and I keep following the story and write and write and write. Okay, I don't care about that kind of self-aggrandizement where you feel, oh, I'm on TV, I look pretty, okay, somebody, don't worry about that. Take care of yourself, look good, but do not really worry about the basic things that people usually uh, get a little bit flattered with. Believe in something and stand for it. Why is nobody writing about the fact that Gambian music is dying and then Senegalese and Nigerian music is coming in and gaining momentum? You are killing our country. For me, those are the best stories that should happen. If you are into journalism, if you don't believe in anything, you'll be going, he said, he said, and go home. You'll be doing the same thing forever. And then your country will lose, your people will lose. Okay? That's why they say the fourth arm of government, this is civil society. If whether it's government, fourth arm, or so civil society, tenth arm, what I care is that you are the drivers of opinion and the changes of opinion in society. Mm -hmm. Okay? Don't settle for the, for the, lim for the uh, minimum. He said, he said, and you think that it will change the country. No, that will not change our country. Okay? Stand for something and believe in it and make a change. Change something. All right? The God president did not appoint a vice president for seven months. Make him do it. Why are you comfortable with that? Don't settle for the minimum because Jamie is gone. Everybody should be happy and be quiet. It is wrong. Talk about it. That if you have that passion that I'm having under me, then you know this is not really about Mandika Wolof or Fula or, or UDP or opponent UDP. It's about your country, your love for your country. Never ever settle for the less because that's how dictators uh, rise up again. Mm -hmm. What happened on the Jamaica should never happen. If they're not upon the vice president, write the damn thing. Don't let them don't be quiet, okay? <laughs> All right? So, um, so just five minutes quick. Yeah, okay. I'm so self, this is, I was talking about self-esteem, you know, sense of believeness, and the highest is self-actualization. Mandela, the Mandelas, the uh, Martin Luther Kings, 
um, EF small, you know EF small, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's our heroes, let's celebrate our heroes. Um, Kwame Nkrumah, these are people, um, I mean, there's a guy who inspires me a lot, you know, your soldier, Thomas Sankara. Yes. I'm not paying debt that I did not take. And we are going to have our own national sense of identity. We wear our local clothes, we build our cotton here and do that. They make change, not mm -hmm. only in their countries and in the world. Do you think as a journalist you are going to end up in your life in the next 15, 20 years doing this? You may be doing that, but you may be, you may be doing something much different. You may be the president, you may be the GPU president, you may be the minister, you may be an editor of a newspaper, but you may be doing something different. I never thought I'll be doing non-profit work, but that's what they call it, non-profit is like NGO here, or I'll be teaching psychology, or even studying PhD in psychology. At the, at why? Why psychology? But then you realize that psychology and all these things we are doing are the same. They are all the same thing. They drive our sense of vision in the world. Okay? So self-actualization, I mean, they are saying, Maslow, this is where many people think Maslow is wrong, because they're saying self-actualization is reserved for the few, the Mandela's, the Martin Luther King's, the Kwame Krumah's. But new psychologists, they call them contemporary psychologists or psychiatrists or whatever, social scientists, they are saying, no, this is not true. It's not reserved for the few. This is for everybody. If, if what Thomas Sankara did, everybody can do that. George can do that. Whoever can do that, you can get there. For me, that's what I believe. I organize rallies if he says he's not accepting refugees in America. I organize rallies and bring in thousands of people and we condemn Trump. And I'm this a kid who has only been born in America. But I do that because I believe in something. And I think all of us can reach here. Okay? You can reach here. So when you are here, don't settle down into he said, she said, that there are physiological needs, and then reporting going back and forth, reach aim for here. Even if you cannot reach here, at least self-esteem, to be able to own a newspaper, to be able to direct or do something bigger, move up the ladder. Okay? But this thing is not reserved for the few, do it. And that's why when the government does something, talk about it. The opposition does something, talk about it. If our entertainment industry is downplaying our own entertainment industry or our sports. You see, Gambia, by the way, Gambian customers have the best wrestling, the best kind of wrestling. When they own a rope, where you hold each other, rope. exactly, rope. rope. Yeah, you hold each other, no hitting, and then you wrestle, and pull. that's the best form of wrestling. The Senegalese one is, is a, a mix of American boxing. But you know why it's not, ours is dead, and ours is not, is not successful? Because we don't have a sense of national self-esteem. And that starts with the people, you must have a sense of self-esteem. You have the best product, Gambian Russell in the rope, and you are not using it. Why are journalists not writing about it? Why are journalists not promoting? Why are you not going to the Ministry of Sports or other places to promote this? To the extent that we will have the best sports product, it will be a national sports that identifies with Gambia, that could be exported to the rest of the world. And Senegal has a mix which is not even original, and they are Exporting. That's the national, they're exporting that. And we are sitting here, we think we are journalists. Your journalism should not be he said or she said. My father can do that with his false news journalist. Mama Kande can do that with his false news journalist. Give them press release to go and publish that. And he say he said, he said, that cannot be enough for you as a journalist. You go further and do things better. You think America just woke up one day and went into South Sudan and helped them to get independence? No. Somebody shared that opinion. The journalists wrote and wrote and wrote about these things to the extent that America as a nation started to get into them and help them to get their independence. You, you are the only ones who can do that. It's not the lawyers or the, or the politicians. So quickly, contemporary scientists are saying that this Maslow hierarchy actually may not be even what is helping us. It's not really what you should be looking at. There are, some, there are simpler ways to look at life, which is the horizontal way. One direction, okay? Horizontal. Horizontal, horizontal. So you, you remember when we started, we said Maslow, you wake up and you go up like a pyramid, and you get whether it's age or not, that is not really the absolute truth. We talked about truth earlier on, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So now they're saying, you know, between childhood and your early adulthood, early adulthood can be, depending on your culture or anything, it could be 18 years or 22 years or anything, you are self-sovereign, self self Self. Obviously, you know what sovereign means, you know, like a sovereign republic, freedom, independence, and things like that. You are only thinking about yourself. You are selfish, like adolescents. 
Like when you are teenagers, they, man, so especially some girls when they are teenagers, they even think their father loves them. You, you, know, you know that, right? Yes. They don't even listen. They talk back at people that are selfish. They are on their phones. They, talk, they don't care about other people. They are self sovereign Believe it or not, there are some adults who are as grown as 54 or 60 years. They are at this stage. So, I mean, this contemporary way of thinking is saying that, you know, Maslow may be right, but not absolutely. This is the best way to look at life in a, in a horizontal way, a shared space where this world, you see things in a broader way, in a horizon, you start at the ocean, you look beyond the horizon, okay? Mm -hmm. That's how you look at life, you're moving, that is more spread out. You are just not contained somewhere, like framed in a, some sort of a container, mm -hmm. okay? All right, so self-sovereign, you don't want to find yourself here. Mm -hmm. Try to move beyond that. Let me self <coughs> because I'm, I'm a fool, I write all about Mama Kande in the papers. That's selfish, don't do that. You are not serving anything, and you'll never succeed in journalism if you do that. Okay, so don't be here. So, but there's uh, what I want to really just quickly share with you is <laughs> yes. <laughs> so quickly share with you is uh, socialized, socialized. Uh, excuse me with the Z or the Z. Socialized, um, uh, and then I'll just change it to S. I, I don't know. Socialized and then self authoring a-U-T-O-R-I-G-E, and then self transform. Transform. All right. So this is a no-no. It's for kids, high school or early adults, but people who are very old can be here. Yes, just people don't grow the same way. It could be because they are lack of education or lack of exposure or experience. Just people are not the same. You may want to strive for higher. Transforming. Self transforming. I, I warned you about my handwriting. So, socialized stage, a lot of people are here, especially our cultures. Gambia, believe it or not, that's where a lot of people are. The socialized stage. I belong. You know, some of these are similar to Maslow's, but I belong. Okay, I'm just part of the new change in Gambia. I'm not going to write about anything. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just, it's okay. I just go to the office and come back. The socialized people say they, they just follow the rules. You come to the office. Ibrahim Bande is a news editor at GRTS. He says, oh, this is how you should have done. There should be a sequence in this report, and you accept it. Question things. If you are somebody who does not question anything, you are just at the socialized stage. There is not really much difference that you can make in society, but you are probably not also that much of a troublemaker because you are just a yes, yes person. You know how they say yes, yes? Yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. You believe in anything, you have bosses. Everybody is your boss. You should be free, you know, have wings and fly, free, free, as a human being, okay? Nothing will happen. Kendall, you good So, so um, just a question yeah. um, about that self socializing. Yeah. When you find yourself in an environment where you are concerning yeah. people, concerning authorities, and concerning then you are here, self authority. Exactly. Well, eventually, this has some implication on you because they start regarding you as this guy is this, and instead, you don't belong to that favorite group of. You know what I mean? Students that they consider are good or they are better or they are best, they just look at you so as someone who is low because of that attitude. Yeah. That's yeah. The yeah. Yeah. So that so that's a blind spot. So what you would do is to improve on your on your communication skills because if you are self uttering you are uh, you you are, you tend to question, you tend to speak for yourself. You have a voice. Even if you obey the rules, you still have a voice. You stand as somebody who can speak for yourself. But then you can easily step into somebody's toes. So you learn just your communication skills, improve them. Communication doesn't mean writing or anything. It's how you uh, are a good listener, how you are good at you know, reframing sentences so that they don't look like you're attacking somebody, okay? So if you do that, then your self-authorization -authorize, would help you. And then that self-authorizing is really what I want at least every journalist to be at, especially you who are just studying. At some point, you should be here. This socialize can help you. My, my reporter, my editor, I shout at you every day. You write something, I throw it. But that's how Sirif told me. I used to throw. You write. You English. I assume you passed English in high school. I throw it if you, if I see basic stuff. Uh, it's not because I'm temperamental or anything. I cannot just handle it. If you call yourself a reporter and write bad English, I throw it on the floor. As an editor, that's what I used to do. Okay. So I'm assuming you are not at that level. So as reporters, please try to be here self authoring question authorities. You go to the status at the press briefing, let them tell you whatever they want to say, but ask questions. Barcott, Barcott said we froze Jamais assets. How did that happen? Why did they not ask people about it? Why not 
other people, Amadou Sambar, what the heck is going on in this country? Question that. You have to ask questions as Gambians. That's what the role of a journalist should be. So this is our journalism today. Self-transforming is really when you want to really be, maybe the sun has become a rebel at some point, and then start causing a lot of trouble, trouble in court, okay? He's not a, he already is. <laughs> He's a rebel, right? So, so self-transforming is really those who make the difference in society. You change things, you can even organize protests at some point. I'm not saying as a reporter, that's what you do, but at some point you transform things, you start newspapers. If you succeed in getting our wrestling to the highest level, or you get our music to get the upper hand than the regional music, then you are self-transforming. You are getting there. That is not reserved for the people, but it's very similar to that self-actualization of Maslow. But you really want to aim to hear, at some point, I want to follow one story for the next six months, Gambian music must get the upper hand. You know? If I am the editor of Standard Newspaper, you bring in Yusundu, I make you advertise for 20,000 for a half page, Maybe you bring you to once a year or even none. And you want to bring in Jaliba where then you advertise for 5,000? You are advertising, you are transforming people. You see, this is not really only about writing, and it's not only about ethics. It's about that agenda that you are trying to build as a nation, as a human being, what you stand for. Okay? So basically, for me, that is my introduction to you. I'm not really going to bother about that. I teach at Harvard, how I do this, why I go to school, I did these degrees. I'm not doing that. I just want you to remember, if you do this, he said, he said, for the next 10 years, you will be the same, okay? And there's going to be a lot of con competition, a lot of uh, 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 saturation of the, of, the, of the field, and then you'll find it very difficult to succeed. And if you are unlucky to find a, an editor or a proprietor like Sheriff or me, you'll find it difficult to succeed. You'll find it easy to succeed if you are doing, if you pass English. But if you really are not writing good English and you are not ready to move to this moment, it will be difficult to succeed. So just think about all these things when you are, when you are entering into this field of journalism, okay? Mm -hmm. Alright, thank you. Thank you. Do you guys have a question for you? Yes. Okay. As you just mentioned that, yeah. as Gambians we should be asking questions. But I am very, very much concerned when it comes to the during the, during your during the presentation when Siri was presenting or oh, I don't know, Sana. You know, you were giving you a lot of flashing lights saying that you were a brilliant reporter, this and that, blah blah. But I would love to <laughs> please allow me to continue. I would really like to know why did you why, why did you change your feelings to study I don't know social I don't know to study what I know psychology, psychology yes. yes instead of continuing your journalism career. So so as I said that's my my new form of journalism is the psychology and the refugee work that I do. So basically because I came to this level of self transforming and I thought with the experience that I had in journalism of wanting to give a change, wanting to give a voice to people, wanting to have my own voice, my own sense of identity. I mean, I'm, into Amer I'm living in America now, I don't know the culture, I don't know the politics. Why would I go into a profession that I may not even succeed that much? Because I'm starting from scratch. I had to settle down and integrate into the society. So I thought, okay, I may have a new form of journalism. So I worked in the bank for five years. Obviously, that's a change of profession too. So it was a matter of survival. I was below at Maslow, you know, that physiological needs, the physics, the food, water, and basic. Food. Yeah, basic needs, that's where I was. But then while I'm doing that, I live in a community of refugees, people coming in, cannot speak English, the only cultures are highly traumatized. And this is my, I, that built my balance to be, to make a difference. And that made a difference, I'm thinking journalism was driving that. Okay, journalism was driving that. You say, okay, I was making a difference in Gambia, I was writing and doing things, why can't I do that? Why do I do have to walk into a newspaper to do that? When I have a whole community, thousands of people to work with. I wanted to make a difference, self-transforming. And that's where I am now. So I studied communication as my bachelor's, which is really close to journalism. Then I, I did a master's in public administration. But uh, because I wanted to know how to administer an NGO, how to write proposals, grants, and get the modern day stuff, and just to, to run it from an organizational perspective. And obviously things that could help me when I return to in the future, which is really this the beginning of it. But then I thought, I'm working with people who have a high level of trauma, high levels of trauma, rather. And then if I really want to help them, I will not only stop at founding an organization to support them.